All right, guys, you already know what it is. You already know what we do and our YCS discussions and updates and things of that nature. Now, um, this is actually not on the website. So they've put the top 64, but they haven't actually made like a post about it. They didn't actually get like configure the deck list. You go pro deck, maybe you go pro deck will have it. Where is Bologna? YCS Bologna. Okay, so uh, fucking Yu Gi Oh Pro Deck has it, but the, the 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 chart that Dual Chronicle makes is better. YCS Bologna. If we're looking specifically at representation, Rescue Ace is still the best deck of the format. I'm still surprised Jerome is are, are doing this well, honestly. Maybe because it's a top 64. Let me look at this and see. Yeah, okay. So Terramans only made it to top eight. They they, they they made it to top eight. They didn't make it to top 64. Somehow Labyrinth is dominating really, really strongly. Once we get to top 16, it's like on the same level as like Rescue Ace, which honestly, I can see why that's happening. Like after facing against Labyrinth myself at the regional, the New York City regional, which is uh, the one that I went to, um, this is this is the event that I was at last weekend. After seeing Labyrinth at this event, I was I was like, okay, Labyrinth is actually a threat. Like I actually have to lab and practice against this deck a little more because clearly Labyrinth players know something that the rest of us don't. Like they they know how to do shit that the rest of us don't, which is make Labyrinth a good deck. Because <laughs> if more people thought Labyrinth was good, I think more people would be on it. It's kind of been overshadowed for by Kashdira for a lot of its existence, right? So it came out during like tier format, I believe. So it's, they've kind of been snuffed out from a legitimate competitive experience, like up until they got Butler. Butler was like, okay, now this deck is like really, really good. Like it, it went from like a okay deck to like a, okay, this is, this is meta now. This is really, really good now, right? Like you could top with Labyrinth before, now it's like consistently topping. That's kind of like the difference. So yeah, Labyrinth is doing well. Unchained still around, Centurion making this impact. <laughs> Definitely not worth the price. This is like Fire King's first weekend. It's already doing pretty well. 6% of top 64, that means it's like... So there are four Fire King in top 64. And then four Pearly, which Pearly, you know, is cool. I did like this comment over here that I saw. Where was it? Proof that Infernoble does not need to be hit on the next ban list because uh, Infernoble was only, like there's only one Infernoble in this whole top 64 and it goes, where Where does it go away? When does the Infernoble player? Oh, Infernoble makes it a top eight. Oh shit, actually, never mind. That's, that's actually kind of goaded. Like he's the only Infernoble player all the way into top eight. That's like three rounds of wins and finally croaking in in top eight, which I think top eight is like the best you can ask for without winning the event. Like, you know, second, you know, top four, like, yeah, you know, top eight is like where most people, you know, kind of like draw the line, I think between like what's competitive and what's not. They say it's about 2,500 duelists. So to be like the, a single Infernoble player, like after that many rounds is pretty cool, pretty crazy. Also there is in this little slither right here, a single Marincess player. Okay, Marincess. Blue Tang, Spring Girl, Seahorse, like this is pretty standard. Uh, I don't see any like spicy new tech here. It's like Marin says the way it's been played for a while. Surprise at the area, uh, area. I don't know what they would be summoning off of this. Like what water monsters are in the game right now that you you would summon from Gra Like I can't think of like broken water monsters, broken generic water monsters. Because if there is a broken generic water link, like it would be in their extra deck because they're locked into water half the time. So I don't know what water monsters they're hoping to summon off of this. Maybe they're using it just to get, just for the link arrows, just to get bodies off field. Because uh, it can use any two monsters. It's not like restrictive or, or as restrictive as um, some other things are. Maybe to get like Nibiru off their board or something. So they can link climb with it. That. That makes sense, right? Marincess doing their thing. There's a few Chimera players. Uh, there's how many Chimera? There's two Chimera, three branded, and then two branded Chimera. Vanquish Soul. I, I guess I'll take a look at Vanquish Soul. Vanquish Soul is like, it's really cool. It's it, it's a really like resource heavy deck. Wow, Vanquish Soul Horus. We got Vanquish Soul Horus over here. Okay, so they're on triple M City one Quebu and Seth. And this is like the worst one. So I, they're only using it for the attribute, I believe, right? Cause M City's dark. Web over here is earth the other two are water and wind so i can kind of understand also only on one king sark that's kind of crazy they're using it for 38 and zombie vampire i never see number 90 and like i'm seeing so many people play horse and then i'm only seeing like zombie vampire i'm like what's going on like 
because clearly, clearly you're not broke. Like you're playing Vanquish Soul. You have triple MCD. You have SP. There's no way you can't afford a number 90. I, I, so th this has to be intentional that like you're not playing 90. Like you'd rather play Ding, Zombie, Vampire, and 38 than the number 90. Which I'm I don't really. I guess they're not as scared about hand traps, but like, doesn't this mean that they just hard lose to Nib unless they make SP before they before they go fifth summon? I uh, can Rock of the Vanquisher. Yeah, like Rock of the Vanquisher can't be used as link material, so I'm wondering how they're making SP like conveniently because that means like you're, you you got to use like link two or higher to make SP now because your link one kind of doesn't help you with that. Uh, they're on Fenrir, Don Didi Crow. They're still on Droll, despite Droll not helping them with their uh, triple attribute. And same thing for Valor. Like, they're on Droll and Valor without that helping for their attribute. A single Ghost Bell seems smart here. You know, you don't want to overcommit to a hand trap that's kind of low impact, but it's sitting in your hand isn't the worst thing ever, right? Because it, it's it's still helpful. So I can understand why they'd use something like Ghost Bell. Same thing with DD Crow. It's like, it's somewhat of a low impact card, unless you're playing against like Fire King or, or like Tier. I can see why they would they would max this out just to make sure that you know the per lily from making a Xyz play. How far did Vanquish Soul get? Like, I don't think uh, anything that's not on this list didn't make it past top 64. So both Vanquish Soul players, okay, they they made it to to, to top 32. And were we looking at the top 32 list or the top 64 list? I think we were looking at the top 64 list. Let me look at the 32 list of Vanquish Soul. Okay, so we got Rise Heart. Last last list was not playing Rise Heart. Okay, we got shifters in this list. That's probably what separates the men from the boys. We got triple Durandal. Uh no small world. We got Dust Devil. Um was was Horus Man playing? Nope. Horus Man was not playing Dust or Continue. I mean, to be fair, like this is still pretty good for Vanquish Soul, like to get top sixty four. So, you know. Especially out of like 2,000 duelists, like li literally kudos to you. Like you definitely had to outplay all your opponents to make it here. I just realized like he's only on a single Mad Love. I think people are cutting Mad Love down like because Jialong like kind of like takes its place now because you can search Snow Devil pretty easily with Xiaolong. And so yeah, Mad Love now has less of less of a place in the deck. It seems like this guy's playing at three, right? Because he's playing like every Vanquish Soul, every good Vanquish Soul spell and trap, right? Like continue and Dust Devil uh, for like interruption. And this guy made it farther. He didn't need any of that expensive horse shit. He kind of kept it <laughs> horse shit. It sounds like I'm saying horse shit. He kind of kept it simple with like the pank, the shifters, uh, which is funny. And and he has a better array of charmers in his uh, in his extra deck. This makes SP Little Knight more consistent, right? Now that you have uh, you know Hita, you have Hita for uh, Rescue Ace. You have Lina for I don't know. I can't even name a light deck off the top of my head. And dark is like every fucking deck. Every every deck can like you, you can hit with dark. So this makes like a uh, SP Lone Eye a little more consistent, or even Nightmare Unicorn, right? I I like the the SP like IP SP Nightmare Unicorn package because this this allows you to like pivot between the two pretty conveniently. Exiton Knight pretty pretty good. Uh, Dempsey pretty good. Typhon Zeus. Okay, I had to make sure this guy was on Typhon because I didn't remember it being in this list. The only thing I like about this uh, extra deck uh, over the other one is the Underworld Goddess. But otherwise, I like this top 32 um, extra deck a lot better. Um, oh, the spicy Gizmek Uka in the side deck. What light deck summons... What, what deck full of light monsters summons from deck? It's pearly, right? Like, you're... you're that would be against pearly, wouldn't it? That's why you'd use Lina here. This gives Uka attack. I've seen a lot of people on this, including like Shunping. Um, I've seen people use this in like Rescue Ace. I'm not a hundred on it, but like it seems to be doing them pretty well so far. Because that's actually kind of crazy. Because like if you Gizmic Uka against Pearly um, and they summon the regular Pearly, then you target their Pearly, summon out Statue of the Heavens. They can't go into any of the smaller Exceed monsters except Happy. Valor's inside. I actually like Valor's inside better. So you don't like, uh, like, because the, the attributes kind of work together, right? Like none of, none of the cards in, uh, in, in this list kind of um, contradict the um, attribute problem. While the top sixty-four list, you know, you have Droll, you have Valor in, in main, you have Magnema in main. Like I'm, I'm like, what, what is Bro cooking? Like what, what Dark Dragon is there? Right? It, it adds a dark. Oh, it adds any dragon monster. Okay, so 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 that makes sense because you can add Caesar Valius. Okay, 
small bestial package actually does help the deck a lot. So, okay, that's cool. I think uh, I'm I'm pretty happy with how Vanquish Soul is doing. I think like this deck just just needs like one more wave of support, like one more card, not even like a wave support. Just needs like one more card. The same way that like Labyrinth got like a uh, Butler. I think Vanquish Soul just needs one more card, and it could be a lot more. Um, it could do a lot more damage as a deck. Really nice stuff on the Gizmic Uka. I'm not 100% on how this stuff works. I haven't been like researching tech cards recently for like the modern format because I play Rescue Ace, so I, I can kind of just monkey things. Really nice tech this guy got going on with the Gizmex. It's cool to see. And you know, shout outs to the guy playing Marincess in 2023. Almost, almost goddamn near 2024 and we're still, still seeing Marincess. I, I want to look at that Infernoble Knight list. And so we'll look at Infernoble Knight. I want to look at Labyrinth and I also want to look at Runic. I also want to look at the first place list. But before I do all that, I just want to see Centurion. What was the highest placing Centurion? It was top 32, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, Centurion, yeah, they, they fumbled after top 32 and there were two of them in there. So we see one Bestial Centurion and we see one Horus Cent uh, Centurion. Horus Centurion is the one that I think would do better, personally. All right, so Triple M City, one Happy. Happy is the best Horus monster that isn't M City, so I think that's a good good number. I, I'm seeing a lot of people on three M City, two, two Sark, it w which is kind of like, why not just max out on Sark? I, I don't get it. Like, why not max out on the card? Unless you're not on 90. Okay, he is on 90. This this is this is actually kind of goaded. This is the first Horus deck I've seen in a long time actually on 90. Most people just use it for Zombie Vampire, which I... <laughs> dude, it's so easy to interrupt Zombie Vampire. I just don't think it's that good of a card, personally. <laughs> um, like, kudos if you're playing, like, some tier um, deck that needs to mill or something like that. But, like, people are even using this in decks that don't even need to mill. So I'm a little confused as to, like... The utility of zombie vampire in some of these lists but because it just seems like you're rolling the dice to potentially get a starter when you could go into like an actual negate or something i don't know why like i i can't see the purpose of going into zombie vampire um in a deck like centurion but that's just me so only single mf i'm, I'm seeing some people on two but like i think uh now people realize you don't really need more than one which is cool it's nice to see people on bonds I think Bonds is a great grind game card. It just sucks if you don't open the Centurion part of the engine, which might actually happen with, considering how few Centurion cards there actually are, right? Like you only have four potential starters. And it's like, yes, you do have four potential starters, but like, um, and that will change post um, Maze of Millennia where we get Bonfire and we could search Judea straight from deck. But for now, it's like we got Fire Emblem stand up Primera and Trudea, and sometimes it like it, it, it is kind of brick cities. Although Phalanx, I think, is a staple simply for the graveyard effect. Triple Legadia, I'm not sure how I feel about that. It does seem like they're really like gearing up for the grind for the grind game. Like even with Phalanx and Bonds, they're still on Triple Legadia. Like, isn't it best to just keep it at two? Like unless you're that worried about best deals and stuff. So Calamity dot deck, right? Blazar, which Blazar is better into matchups like Labyrinth anyway. So you wouldn't really go blind Calamity, or you wouldn't go um, Calamity in every single uh, situation. Sometimes Blazar is better. Um, Scarlights for time, Exiton Knight, you know, Ding, Ar Artemis, and then SP. Premier is a spellcaster. So is Imcity. Actually, that's kind of funny. It is level four lower spellcaster. Never mind. Uh, deck lockdown. That's interesting. I guess you don't really need to search much in this deck. Like it's only Primera and Fenrir that searches, which both are kind of like whatever. Oh, and same thing for terraforming. But because I guess he deck lockdown. It like if this if this deck was kind of like Metal Foes, where it could like remove its own spells and traps from field to like play its turn. I could see why you would want to use something like deck lockdown. But I could kind of see deck lockdown also hurting this deck because um, because a stand up you can only use its best effect the turn that you activate it. So you'd want to search with terraforming, like that's why terraforming is so important in this deck, right? Like you want to search another one to get your monsters into spell and trap zone. You want to have as many copies of these as possible. So you, you always want to like get access to like another one by locking them out with deck lockdown. You can play something even if you don't make it to Crimson Dragon. 
you can win in the grind game if they haven't opened their actual starters and they, they need their searchers to play. It seems like a cool tech. Book of Moon. I use Book of Moon in my, in my list to dodge Imperm. I'm not sure what they're using Book of Moon in this list for. Like, what are they trying to dodge? Or what are they trying to hit? I'm not too sure. Because, like, I don't think this deck loses to Imperm. Unless it's, like, Imp Imperm on, like, Primera. So I'm not sure what they're trying to hit with Book. Uh, but otherwise, it looks like a solid list. Artemis seems like a cool tech. Just, just so you can make an SP off of, off of Primera. It's like Primera, go stand up, stand up, get Trudea, uh, Trudea summon itself. I would say personally, I think this deck kind of needs Super Poly. Um, I'll be honest with you. I don't think Triple Tactics talent is going to be enough to play through some boards. I, like, I think you need a card like Super Poly to play through shit. That's the only thing I would say. I'm not sure what the purpose of the Book of Moons are, but that's something that I would personally change if I was on this list. But hey, you know. All the more power to him because you definitely have a lot of space in like extra deck especially if you're not on like i don't think ding is that important personally i also don't think zombie vampire is that important um and artemis is like yes it is good i don't know how important it is to, i don't know how many times like you actually go into this compared to like the rest of your extra deck and scarlet you, maybe you could put this in inside and you don't need the third legatia either so there may be situations where Playing Super Poly is like stronger than some of the cards already in your extra deck. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Uh, now we can see the Bestial Centurion, right? So we got Lubellion, Druus Worm, Magnema, no Sawnir. Also, no, none of the branded spells or traps, like no branded beast or anything, which I think is a good call. Prosperity, yeah, Prosperity. Not playing Prosperity in Centurion seems kind of crazy in my opinion because like you really don't need the fucking draw from draw from m city that much to where like it completely contradicts prod of prosperity if you play like m city you can probably cut prosperity down like two getting the prosperity search to like start your combo in the first place i think is way more important than not playing prosperity at all so that's another thing i'd i'd say about the last list otherwise it looks pretty standard this guy is is on bonds as well only one lubellion not not trying to like overdo it if they get it they get it if they don't they don't i'm a little surprised at the right saw i don't know how much they value fenrir in this deck it doesn't seem like fenrir would be like that big of a deal but apparently it is wow that's a spicy that's a spicy side deck. <laughs> Solemns make sense, right? Because you want your stuff to resolve. Inscription is kind of crazy. Like, this is a really hard side against here. Maybe if you play against Rescue Ace, you do the second effect. Neither player can banish. That would be really effective against Rescue Ace. Stop them from comboing. I don't know about the third effect, but the but the first two seem really good. The first two effects seem really good. So, Grey Fever's Inscription might might just be the tech. And this guy's on two Legadia. I don't know why the last guy was on three. Chaos Angel in the list, right? Because you're on B uh, Bestial, so it's more likely that you'll make it. Baron. Final Sigma. Um, if you want to make Calamity, lock, uh, Calamity guaranteed maybe so like it's it's less susceptible to uh books or like removal i guess would be why you go for final sigma i'm, I'm not too sure uh cowboy for game okay uh azalea this is uh sp little knight light basically if it's summoned you could pop a card on the field um but it has to but it has to send itself to the graveyard if you don't have enough spells so really, on, the only decks I can use this other than Sky Striker are like Pearly because they stack spells in their grave, and I guess Centurion like wouldn't mind because like you got Oof, you got Stand Up because you're gonna have to use all those stamps, you got Terraforming, Prosperity. Like yeah, you know you could probably get to three spells and traps before summoning this. Um, and then you have your Charmer Links. That's pretty good. I like this list a bit more than the other one. Although I like the horse engine in Centurion better than I like Bestials, I do think this list is more solid. It just seems more solid in my opinion. I'm, I'm still thrown off by the right off, but otherwise, a solid list. Okay. Uh, I did want to look at Infernoble Knight. Right, simple spoils, Infernoble. 45 cards. We got one of each Infernoble Knight name. I'm just starting to test out Infernoble. Um, 
with the simple spoil stuff. It's crazy. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but it's a lot of fun. So like now, now I'm going to look at it with a little more of a critical eye because now I kind of know what's going on a little better. Uh, Renat at one seems like some people like it at two. I think it at one is correct. Also 45 cards. I know it sounds kind of copium and it, like you really don't need 45 if you're playing all these searchers. Like you're playing for like a, it's like you're you're still like within the realm of consistency. You're just opening up your your hands to having a little more variance with like hand traps. But like he's really not on that many hand traps. Like for a 45 card list, like only 12 hand traps is like kind of not that many. You know, like if, if he was on like 15 hand traps, like maybe maybe 45 would be worth it but if you're only on 12 hand traps like you could you could cut this down to 40 i think um i don't know if you need a double triple tactics in main i mean look this guy made it to top eight of a 2000 person event i i can't really be talking shit on this list right um yeah gear free red layer only a single durandal i remember actually seeing this list and seeing only the single durandal and being like flabbergasted but you look at how many searchers there are in the deck, and it's like, you, I'm just less surprised. Also, single Diabell Star, I don't think Diabell Star is needed at more than one. Even in Infernoble, where Diabell Star is like the freest card of all time, because of your ability to um, acquire resources from the graveyard, I still think it's like, um, I still think playing it at one of is correct. Like, if they have the best deal, they have it. I, I don't really care. Um, once it's, once it's in grave, it's already fulfilled its purpose. The, the gears have already started turning. So e even, even in a uh, infernoble. So I'm less worried about, um, playing more copies of Diabell star or I'm less worried about this Dia Diabell star or, or what happens to it once it hits graveyard. Uh, action deck looks pretty standard. Um, nothing really spicy here in terms of in Infernoble, at least. Uh, let's see the side. Okay, Gizmic Uka. Everyone's on the Ukas. Spellbound. Pretty good. Pretty good tech card. Um, I didn't really watch the event. I don't know if this Infernoble player was on stream. I, I would love to see one of their matches, personally. But um, good shit to... Oh, wait. This is Pack. <laughs> this is Pack's list. Okay. Well, good shit to Pack. Um... Looks like he packed his deck 40, full of 45 cards. Um, yeah, I, I can't say much much is wrong with this list. Um, seems like a pretty spicy, good list for for the format. Um, anything else interesting I want to look at? I, I guess Fire King. I also want to look at Fire King. How did the best Fire King deck do? Or this is the highest placing Fire King deck, I believe. I don't think there's another one in top six. No, because, yeah, because this is top 16. So since this is top 16, this is the highest placing Fire King list. So this is the one I want to look at the most. Okay. Now, hot take. I'm not seeing enough people play this card. I'm seeing this deck in, in like, OCG, and nobody's playing this one in, like, OCG. So I'm a little flabbergasted as to what's going on over there. But I do think this card should be like a one of in your list. Like I just think the spell and trap negation is just too free. Like why not? Just like why not just play it? You know, like since you get so much off of your Fire King stuff anyway, like you get to set up a sort of like really solid grind game. Why not just set up a grind game with an extra interruption on top of everything? It just seems like a no brainer. Um. So yeah, tr uh, double Garunix, triple Kieran. Kieran is like the best card in the deck, I think. Like, Barong's only good because of Garunix, or yeah, Fire King Garunix. Um, I think Kieran is like the best card in the deck. If you like called by the grave at Kieran, I think you might be able to stop the deck for a turn. Um, double Skyburn seems spicy. Um, the person I played at Locals, he was playing Circle of the Fire Kings, and I was a little surprised he was like on that card, because it just doesn't seem to be like a high impact card like skyburn seems to be like the highest impact um fire king spell and trap that they've printed yet so i think like over time this is going to be like uh the the one that you see the most played 
And it targets like uh, any card to your opponent controls. It doesn't just target monsters. So it's just way too good to like pass up. Uh, Prosperity, Double Island, Dia Bellstar. And a extra deck of kind of whatever, like, to be honest, Fire Kings, like, they really don't need to dig into their um, extra deck too often. They can kind of just play with, like, one or two cards out of extra, plus their main. As long as they can, like, loop um, Barong and Garunix and, and, and Ponix and Kirin. Like, this is, like, the four for the core of the Fire King deck. Like, these four cards right here. And... I think as long as these cards are in rotation, the deck is not going to have a problem dealing with, with a lot of matchups. Um, I really like that, that this dude played the Spell Trap Negate, because I am I was really surprised, because I, I bought a Fire King Structure Deck just to read all the cards, and then I started looking a little closer at some of the OCG lists I was looking at, and then I was surprised when I saw not that many people played the Rang Bali. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy to see that this card is doing... Is, is putting in the work. I did see, um, oh, skill drain. That's actually spicy. Um, everything else here looks pretty standard. That triple thrust, um, I wonder what their, what normal spell they really want to dig for. Is this for evenly? I can't imagine, like, this is for just, like, you're playing triple thrust just to go for tactics and evenly. Like, that, that seems like wow, you really want this evenly to resolve, or you really want this uh, talents to, to to resolve, it seems. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a really solid... Fire King is a really solid control deck. I don't think you need to play the Snake Eye Ash, because you there's really nothing you could make with the uh, Ponix going first that like is really impactful and morph spending your um your monsters for i think it's good to just play like nib like you can play nib and main in this deck because you really don't care about your monsters like you casually destroy your own monsters um so no, board wiping yourself really is not that that big of a deal um as long as it stops the opponent for the turn once you can get back next turn or yeah like like w once it comes back to your turn um you're, you're gonna be just fine with like Ponix going back to hand, Barong getting a search, possibly Karen, you know, being able to play out of Karen and Grunix being able to play out of graveyard. I'd love to see like Fire King versus like Unchained on like a feature duel. I, 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 I'm like that would be like a, a match of the century, just like everything getting popped. I think Unchained would win. Maybe I, I like it, it, I, I'm having trouble seeing Unchained losing to um unchained losing to this deck honestly um but may maybe that's just me right um otherwise looks like a pretty solid list um really interesting to see how how far skill drain goes and skill drain doesn't even like it, unchained doesn't even care about skill drain I'll, I'll, I'll keep it honest with you like once they have their best cards in rotation they really don't need this for anything other than um then Yama and Soul of Rage, but they also have access to just go straight into, um, but they also have, like, the, the, the trap cards to, like, play around things anyway, so they kind of, like, don't care about Skill Drain that much. So, yeah. Ah, and they have the YouTube video right down here. How convenient. Okay. So that was Fire King. I don't think I'm gonna look at Rika. I don't, I don't care about Rika at the moment. Like, Rick is cool, but I don't, I don't like, you know, I'm sure it could do well. I'm sure it could, you know, top and stuff, but I don't really care about it. What I want to look is, is uh, Dinkabooie's Labyrinth that got fourth place. Um, this is a deck that I struggle with, struggle going, going against. And the only reason why is because no matter how many times I read the Labyrinth cards, I still struggle to comprehend what they do. Like, what they really do, you know? Like, the pearly the pearly cards that, like, have, like, um, that summon from deck, like, you kind of, like, start to understand, like, oh, like, they do this, or, like, this one does that, that particular thing. This don't, this one does that particular thing. And, yeah, like, really, it's, like, there's only, like, a certain card that you have to look out for. 
Whereas like in Labyrinth, if you're not careful, it's really easy for them to like outplay you if if you aren't like considering like what they have left. And it's like, I don't know, like maybe it's just like I have to sit here and read all these cards one by one. But like no matter how many times I face a Labyrinth deck, it's, it's, it's like I keep forgetting what these cards do. Like there's just so many effects on each card. Um, that like they work out of hand, they work out of grave. It's like so much to like comprehend and like take in. Labyrinth setup is not one that I see a lot of people on. Um, interestingly, so that's new. This is new to me. Um, seeing Backjack seems to be a player preference card. Dinkabooey seems to like it, so that's cool. Um, I don't always see people going to Labyrinth Labyrinth. Um, sometimes, like, I see it in, like, a grind game scenario, but, it, like, it's not always there. Like, they don't really care about, like, opening this card. They'd rather just, like, search into it or, or something, I guess. Um. Hmm. So, triple trap tick, but only a single dogmatic of punishment. Is he playing another inside? He's not. He's playing, like, a lot of, like, single trap cards. Despite being on triple trap trick. I wonder what that's about. Ice Dragon Prison seems to be a big one for him. Um, D Barrier, Epidemic Virus, DD Ground, um, Double Lord of Heavenly Prison. And yeah, so Lord of Heavenly Prison has an interesting interaction against um, Unchained, which is, uh, you know, I, I learned this from uh, Kenny, Kenny YGO. But, um, you can reveal, when you have the Lord of Heavenly Prison revealed, it stops all set spawn and trap cards on the field from being destroyed by card effects, so Unchained players will not be able to, like, plus off of popping their sets because their sets won't be able to be popped as long as Lord is revealed in hand. Which means, um, if Labyrinth goes first and sets up this card against Unchained, it's very likely they might not even be able to play. So, but because Unchained will be going second, maybe they open evenly. I guess, like, I don't, well, game one, I, actually, no, this is side deck, so that won't be game one, that'll be game two or game three. You mix that with, like, a Phantasmi or something, I guess, and that, that could be pretty cool, so, um, yeah, I mean, it, it just seems like a sick interaction against, uh, Unchained. Uh, Chimera stuff in the extra deck, I don't know what that's about. Maybe for the Dogmatic of Punishment. Oh yeah, because these guys can banish themselves and, and special summon back fiends from the graveyard. And he can summon back a banish fiend monster, so... They can revive your... Mmm... That's interesting. The the Chimera stuff can revive your Labyrinth monsters from the graveyard. But if that's like such a big thing, like why only play a single Dogmatic of Punishment? That seems like that's, that's, that's a big play. Like that's... Like I'd want to do that more often, I don't know why... That's not, like, a more consistent thing. I guess maybe you can Book of Moon to dodge Dogmatic of Punishment, or, like, you know, because it targets, if if the monster gets removed from field or put face down, its uh, stats are no longer public knowledge, per se, and then uh, the effect just whiffs because it, it cannot confirm the stats of the monster. So maybe it, it's because it's too easy to play around Dogmatic and Punishment, and mixing that with a Karma Cannon might be might be conflicting. But yeah, I mean that's it's, it's not like the worst thing ever. It's not like the worst conflict, right? It's not like a Prod of Prosperity versus like Desires, you know? Like, like that's a conflict right there, you know? Th that's like not as bad. Uh, Double Typhon seems spicy, right? So. Um, because they want to use this to win in the grind game, maybe overlay backjack or like a servant. Eh, they probably won't use servant. They probably use like uh, like Arius because Ar Arius is better in graveyard and she only has fifteen hundred attack. So I think Arius would be the one they use. Um, Torby would probably be used to make Chaos Angel. So yeah, I think they'd use uh, Arius out of all the labyrinths to go into Typhon. But yeah, otherwise the deck looks uh, pretty standard. Uh, Epidemic Virus, still a toxic card. I'm surprised they're not on two of these to guarantee this going first if they draw a trap trick, but 
you know, all the more power to them, uh, to, to Dinkabui for making it to top four. Um, I still don't, I'm still not a hundred on how the hell this deck plays or how to stop it, but like, uh, it, it just getting more exposure to it, I think it's good because the more people, more that people are exposed to it, the more I'm going to see cards that stop it. Um, and the more cards to stop it, the more I think like, okay, uh, the more I can be like, pick, the more I can pick and choose like which cards I think can work in my list so I can start being Labyrinth more consistently. Uh, so let's look at the Rescue Ace deck that got second. Um, so Simple Spoils, Rescue Ace. Are they on Cross Out? Okay, so they're on Cross Out, they're on Econ, they're on Marionette Might. That's really interesting. I never thought um, I'd see a Rescue Ace player on it, but that's interesting. They're on Pearly for the Cross Out target. But like, they don't always need the Pearly. Like sometimes they can just summon Nor without going into cross out like it really just depends on what they open impulse and fire engine in the side deck that's spicy okay um no fire attacker at all impulse and main double dia bell star this is really this is a really interesting list i don't know if i fuck with it though like double hydrant double turbulence So they're relying more on opening like the Dia Bell Star engine. And because they're on 40, it's like it's more likely that they're gonna see it too. Um they're on Nib in main. Is Droll in the side? Yes, Droll is in the side. And I guess like Fire Engine is like matchup dependent, right? Like uh just to And then Econ's in the side. I think Econ is a good side. Uh now I'm gonna hold you. Um cross outs in the side to stop. But I, I'm, I'm kind of flabbergasted. Kind of like, when do you lose to Nib? Like, when does Rescue Ace lose to Nib? Is like crossouts for like the mirror match. Like if they go first, and they're in the mirror match, like crossout just wins. But like, it seems like a really weird side. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm sure it like it's got it's gotten them good. Like I'm not saying that it's it's bad. It just feels like wow, like that works you know like that's kind of more the epiphany i'm having here like i'm surprised that it works but yeah um it seems like they've they've done pretty well for themselves with uh what they've got here no relinquished anima despite the extra space in the side uh in the extra deck we see dweller which i'm still not a believer of rank fours in rescue ace but i know it's possible um, Sunlight Wolf for the grind game, Heat Soul, in case you brick, quote unquote, uh, double SP because you have the space for it. Um, Celine because it's better than going into something else. Proxy F, I, I, I can't agree with Proxy F personally. I just think it just takes too much setup to like work. Like going into all that for a Mud Dragon when you can just summon SP, you know? Like, it just seems like it's it's a waste of uh, resources. Like, I'm still not totally convinced on this card personally, but yeah. Selene, pretty good, uh, especially if you're on the double D of Bellstar. Selene's like a pretty great card to like uh, keep your combos going. Apo, I can see Apo being a great um, starter for the deck, or not starter, um, end piece for the deck. So instead of ending on like Terra Hertz, you end on, on like a green material Apo. <laughs> Maybe you like you go Sunlight Wolf. You go like Link Rebo, Sunlight Wolf, then you go into I don't know something from there. Like you go into Apo from there, or Sunlight Wolf into Link Rebo, and then I don't know. But that's just less likely. Like it's just less likely to happen going into Sunlight Wolf before you make Link Rebo off of just one card. It's just way less likely to happen. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Triple Prosperity, right? I can, I can understand the Prosperities. Seems cool. Um, 
And by lowering Hydra down to two and like playing more of the Diabell Star stuff, like you kind of like more guarantee that you're gonna open that you're gonna play off of the wanted stuff, which makes you more susceptible to Ash Blossom, especially since you're not playing Called by the Grave and you're relying on like game one, I, like this looks like a really hard game one. Like in my list, I, I play cards so that I could go either first or second game one. Um, whether I lose the die roll, like I'm not too mad whether I lose the die roll or not game one. Like this seems like a really tough game one. Like if you don't open nib, it seems like a really tough game one. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just my my take on this, but okay. Rescue Ace doing its thing, you know? Like it, it Rescue Ace has a lot of room for like for like for innovation and um putting your own takes in there, so uh good to see that this is what you know, good to see that, you know, Regardless of what you play. Also, there's also no triple tactics throughout the entire list. Like, I know this deck is good at playing around hand traps. I'm a little surprised that there's no triple tactics. Also, no fire attacker. Seems kind of crazy. But, you know, fire attacker is more matchup dependent, I guess. Like, Nib can, can snuff out so many decks just being in main that I guess uh, it's not that big of a deal. So, yeah. Cool rescue ace list. And then Joshua's Bestial Runic list. Um Okay, 40 cards. I'm seeing like I've been seeing a lot of lists of like Bestial Synchro decks since this has topped. And I'm seeing them on like 60 cards, and I'm just like lost as to how 60 cards helps them do what they want to do. So it's good to see that this is actually a 40 card list. Because I like for a second, for a good minute there, I was kind of like, wait, did did he really play a sixty card runic bestial deck and that worked? Because that would be like, damn, that's impressive. But I I, I could not fucking agree at all. <laughs> um, I'm really like not too sure what bestial looper does here. Like, what's its purpose here? Maybe it's so that you can. Special summon Cartesia for free. Or you can mill it off of uh, Quem, and because it's a tuner, right? Yeah, it's because it's a dragon tuner that's a little more valuable in Grave. Like, you could, like, uh, banish it for, like, a Bestial, then summon it back off of uh, Dispater. Maybe that's the point. Only one Druid Swarm in main sounds crazy. Maybe, like, because he's trying to set up with Quem and Sonier. Like, I heard Quem is, like, the starter. I'm still not exactly sure what that means because I don't know, like, what cards are you playing to get access to Quem, right? Because she's a Dogmatica and a Despia. You're not going to get her off of, like, dropping Lubellion. It just seems like it's a very uh, skill curve kind of deck like I can't like look at this and come and immediately understand what's going on I have to like I'd really have to know what's going on in Joshua's mind to play a, a list like this and that's one of the things about Yu-Gi-Oh that I like because you can kind of like express like the, the skill expression in Yu-Gi-Oh is so unique like you can really just play a, a deck that just does not make sense to the general public and still win with it because you know how to maneuver it to your to your advantage and that's what's most important right and then over time people will kind of start to catch up right they'll be like, oh that's how that works that's how you play around that now runics have kind of been like a really good sub engine for like a long time like ever since they first gotten released i've i've always believed that runics have been um one of the strongest archetypes ever released in Yu-Gi-Oh history and Honestly, I hate Runic as like a deck, but to see it used as like a synchro package, I think is all is always like an interesting thing. Um, unless it's Naturia, because Naturia is lame, right? You just summon Beast and Baron. Like who cares? Um, but <laughs> um, in, in a Bestial deck where you kind of have a little more um, freeform between like what you want to summon and what you synchro up into, it's it's a little cooler. Um, also, seeing Duality, right? Um, I 
like I'm a little more like you can duality uh, Gary into Fabled Unicorn. This seems like it's just a duality deck. Like I think like Joshua Schmidt saw duality and he was like, "How can I make the most use out of this card?" Uh, you can tribute Lubalion, summon out Scarlight for a Dragon Archfiend. That's pretty cool. You can go. Uh, he doesn't really have anything for the level sixes though, right? Like the Bestials are kind of like not important. You could turn your um, Yugen into this level two. Alvain, the Essence of Vanity, this random ass normal fusion monster. Uh, which is cool, I guess, right? You can turn Hugin into a tuner with uh, duality. Uh, and that can make a Chaos Angel with both effects, so that's kind of cool. Uh, and yeah. Oh shit. I guess a uh, double regain. Regain is like a crazy um, grind game card, and because you're playing Runic, it's really hard for your opponent to like break your board if you're on Runic. Um, like unless they play a direct counter for Fountain, which most decks are not at the moment because we're in a very hand trap heavy format. We're not in a board breaker format. Most people keep board breakers in their side, so because we're in a very hand trap heavy format. Um, Runic is gonna like it's gonna be like a long game, like you you're not gonna beat Runic in a single turn, um most cases if they have like one or two Runics in hand plus like some hand traps it's gonna be really hard to deal with whatever Runic has has in hand right and the fact that they have a great grind game with Fountain regained, um and the fact that like once they have Fountain like half the cards in their deck are hand traps. Like, sound, you know, Magnuma, Druus Worm, Baldrake, Ash, uh, Flashing Fire, Freezing Curses, Destruction. That's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15? 15 hand traps in their death. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Uh, two more if you count the Sauniers as hand traps, you know? Um, I don't think Slumber actually does anything. No, it doesn't do anything that important. Um, and then Tip, like, is a hand trap searcher in its own way, right? And then, like, once they use three of their runics, they get to shuffle them back, draw more. Well, not shuffle back, put it at the bottom of the deck, but that it, it's still crazy. It's still a really crazy uh, mix of cards that he has going on here. Uh, Triage Master is cool. It's, it's nice to see this in a list that's finally doing something. Uh, so for the two and four, because he's definitely not making five and one. So for the two and four, he gets to draw a card off of this, which I guess he's using this only because it's a non-tuner. Because otherwise, he would have just go into Coral Dragon every time. But sometimes the non-tuner is important. Also, well, all your level fours are tuners, aren't they? Yes, they are. Unless, uh... no, Gary isn't a tuner. So you can go Triage Master plus Gary. And make Chaos Angel. That that seems like another cool route that you can go into. So that's something. And then Fabled Unicorn is so interesting because it's like it's a really fringe situation kind of card. Like you're not always gonna have like a duality plus a runic name, but when you do, you can it's really easy for you to manipulate your hand to have the exact number of um cards as your opponent has so it could be a really interesting uh time if you resolve fable unicorn or if you actually get it on board because now like they have to dedicate resources to like beating this card and like let's say okay like you had the same number of cards right so now you activate something to like put your put your hand sights down so that you're you know, that Joshua's only, like, one card, you know, like, now the the, the card is, the cards in hand are, aren't, aren't equal anymore, but because, like, most of his stuff is chainable from hand once he controls Fountain, it's, like, it's really easy for him to manipulate his hand to control the exact same number of cards as, as you, so you kind of have to commit more to, like, beating Unicorn's effect a bit. And then, like, 
he'll just activate like a slumber or, or smiting storm or whatever, just like a whatever card, just to, um, just to like change the number of cards in his hand, and it'll be really hard to play around Fable Unicorn. So, really cool deck concept. Denko Sekas in main is crazy. The Labyrinth hate is crazy. This this might be a funny tech against Labyrinth. I, I'm I'm not even gonna lie. I can't like imagine playing this though, like in Rescue Ace. It just it just would conflict too much. But it's it's funny to think about though. We're going second. Like if I open this plus like wanted poster maybe. Uh but then I won't be able to turbulence. So it kinda defeats the point. Alright. Well, that was YCS Bologna. Um Right. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So here we go. YCS Bologna. There's the pie chart again. And before we go, because I want to show you guys one more event, which is like the the regional I was at. They say 450 people. It was like 390 actually. Um, there were like a few people in like side events and stuff, but like for the main event, it was like 390 people. Uh, and it's like, man, Generator, Dragon Link. Um, and because this is a regional, it's, it's not like top cut really matters. Like this is, this is all just Swiss. This is all just like, um, whoever got the most points in, in, in Swiss. Uh, I just want to see the Generator list. Because, you know, clearly, oh my God, please. 